Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at White Squirrel Winery. Discover a romantic winery and vineyard in the heart of Northwest Tennessee. Thank you, Eric, and welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we together explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Eric, before I introduce today's very special guest, tell me something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America. What I've discovered this week at uh, Discovery Park is uh, the bees are back in the Simmons Bank Ag Center. So with the bees being back, you can now see a working hive um, see all the bees that actually help pollinate all our flowers and plants around the park. I'm so glad you said that because I was over there a couple of days ago and I noticed the curtain that mm-hmm. was there and I thought, what is behind the curtain? And I pulled it back and there was the beehive. I understand that the lights and everything had been sort of chasing the bees out after they would get the hive going. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, you come to us your job before you worked here at discovery park in the education department was with the boy scouts of america so you have a lot of experience in educating young folks and uh in that whole world what what is uh becoming your what is or is becoming your favorite part of working at discovery park uh definitely being able to interact with kids every day and seeing them kind of enjoy everything around the park especially when they walk in and see the big bear and they're like wow what is that is it is it real in all this? And I've had to explain to that things to him. Excellent. Well, you're doing a great job, and it's great to have you here on the team. Our guest today is Marsh Nadu. Did I say that right? That's perfect. Fantastic. She's the host of the Raising Kellen podcast. Uh, she reached out to me because she's been listening to our podcast, and I have been listening to her podcast. So um, we're going to have a love fest today. Uh, so, Marsh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background. Where did you come from? Where were you born? Uh, what was your childhood like? Things like that. Scott, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity um, just to, to spread the, the mission and vision of raising Kellen. And just a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Durban, South Africa, many moons ago. Um, I love to travel. Um, if I could have been a professional backpacker, that is the profession I would have chosen. Uh, Me too. That, that would be a fun profession. I uh, came to the States about 25 years ago as a travel PT, stayed here for a whole, whole bunch of years and uh, went away for a short time um, to, to return back to South Africa, return uh, with Kellen's birth. Um, so I'm still continue as a physical therapist. That's my profession. Um, I live and work here in Diasburg, Tennessee, uh, have a little therapy practice um and uh but my passion scott is the blogging and podcasting i do at raising Kellen. and for those folks who may not have heard of uh the the podcast it's basically a podcast to empower and educate parents raising children with disabilities so we curate a whole bunch of resources um to help patients and parents, sorry, to help parents along from the diagnosis phase and and kind of let folks know about ongoing supports that are available um, worldwide, but as well in the state of Tennessee. You went from travel to physical therapy. What made you decide physical therapy was the ultimate job you wanted to have? I come from a a family um, with a medical background. So my dad was a doctor. That's where we spent many summers uh, going to work with him uh, to get out of my mom's hair. So the three of us, uh, it's me and two sisters that charged to the hospital. And, you know, we helped in the different departments. And, you know, physical therapy was something I've always been interested in. And uh, 
I pursued that as my career and uh, just really fortunate because it has given me um, opportunities to travel. I mean, it's given me opportunities to come to the States and and uh, this is now my home and just extremely fortunate for the opportunities um, that I've been granted by choosing my profession and, and most importantly, Scott, allowing me to serve my patients. Um, uh, you know, I so enjoy what I do. I mean, this is um, this is something I was born to do. So just really enjoy it. So you were born in South Africa. You've traveled all over the world. You've landed in West Tennessee. Uh, you're living in Dyersburg. What brought you to Dyersburg? So um, there is a physical therapist that uh, started a practice here about 10 years ago. Um, he was really needing help. And uh, so I was kind of recruited to Dyersburg. And, you know, never in a million years would I have thought small town was a place that would appeal to me. I've always lived in a, in a bigger city, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I love the people. I love the culture. And, and this is home. Um, so this is just a conversation that happened between Kellen and my mom as they Skype. And uh, my mom is like, so what have you been eating? And Kellen's like, you know, just my regular food. And she said, what's that, a good curry? Um, I'm ethnically Indian. So he's like, no, my catfish and green beans and my lemonade. And she's like, what kind of what kind of Durban boy are you? She, he said, no, Granny, I, I'm a Diasburg boy. So um, what can I say? Out of the mouth of babes. So yeah, very, very much rooted here in Tennessee and proud to call Diasburg our home. Yeah, fantastic. So so you mentioned uh Kellen. So tell us about uh Kellen, his birth, um, and what uh inspired you to eventually have the podcast that you have. All right. So Kellen is now 11 years old. Um, Kellen was born in um, South Africa. And at 14 months old, he we received a diagnosis of cerebral palsy. That started the transition back of me coming back to the States because I, I knew this is where we needed to be at for several reasons. Um, medical, our rehab, and our schooling, just because of the whole breadth and depth of resources that are available. And um, so th that's kind of what transpired and how we got over here, um, Scott. As far as the podcast was concerned, um, with Kaylin, there was just a whole lot of digging around, searching on the internet, trying to find resources to help him. And um, when I went back to South Africa in 2019, I presented at a conference, right? And um, the input I got from therapists at that conference is, why don't you put this information down in a format that parents could access? Um, and uh, I'm like, you know, guys, that's a good idea. And that's what started the blog. Now, the podcast is a whole different story. Um, the I didn't even know what a podcast was, Scott, but um, a young gentleman, um, Drake Box, who's actually gone on to start his own podcast now. But uh, Drake was like, Miss Marsh, you got to check out these podcasts. That would be a really neat way for parents to listen on the go. And that's what kind of caused that evolution to happen. So what, uh, how does uh, Kellen's disability affect him in his day-to-day -day life? So Kellen is at the moment in summer school. So that's where he's at. And he's very much a social person. He chose to go to summer school simply to be around um, the other kids. He is the only child. Uh, the way his um, uh, cerebral palsy manifests is that um, he's a spastic diaplegic, which means he gets around for short distances with a pair of crutches and longer distance is like coming up to Discovery Park for their school trip who's in a wheelchair. Um, very, um, just a very social person and uh, just, just fun to be around. 
Well, and I was looking at uh, photographs, and what stands out about Kellen is not his disability, but his smile. I mean, he has got a smile that lights up the whole computer screen. Well, you see where he gets it from, don't you? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I I can tell. So you you obviously went through a lot of uh emotion when you first found out. Uh tell us a little bit about uh you know where you you were unique in in this world I'm assuming because many children with disabilities are not born to parents who are also physical therapists. So um you were able to probably see things that other parents might not what was the emotions behind uh his diagnosis and trying to figure out what the rest of your life was going to be like um uh, very much um you know as we synthesize the motion you would often hear of parents going through the five stages of grieving so it's you know the denial the then the acknowledging and um there's a lot of retrospection with that. Um, and it was an exceptionally difficult time. And my parents or support system at that time, you know, said, look, you gotta, you gotta get going with things. Um, and, but having said that, I think in terms of being a parent, you have an association or what you perceive the, the perfect or ideal to be. We tell ourselves the story, right? So when things are different from that story, it's about you being able to perhaps write a different script. And, and that's what that's been like, Scott. Do you feel like uh, when when this first happened and you started thinking, um, you of course probably didn't yet know that you were gonna be in a rural community. Um, do you feel like there were less resources for a parent of a child with a disability in rural communities than maybe in a metropolitan area? You know, that's kind of like a two-edged sword because they may not be as many choices, but I think our area really does have top-notch providers. And um, there's just so much that's available now as well. Um, and we have fantastic school. Our school systems are really well set up. And there's just a lot happening on the state level as well. We have a very progressive Department of Developmental and Intellectual Disabilities that are rolling out programs for young adults in the secondary or high school um, you know, situation to learn skills that can then be transferred onto a job placement situation. Uh, Diasburg Community College started the Eagle Access Program. So people are starting to perhaps reframe what disability is. They're starting to think beyond. And, you know, actually giving our young people, actually giving persons with disabilities a chance to not only just survive, but to actually thrive. And in you using the language that you used, a person with a disability, I think the language that folks use, people who do not have someone in their life who is dealing with a disability may not know what the proper language is and the way to describe. And I know that has evolved a bit. You want to speak a little bit about that? Thank you so much for asking me that question. I, I just, I, I would, I mean, so let, let's start with this first. There have been many models of disability through the years, right? You get the the charity model of where disability is seen as something to be pitied. Um, you then get the environmental uh, model where people see disability as something that comes about because we're unable to access our environment. So, for example, there is stairs leading into the building and not a ramp. So that automatically is a boundary that's going to cut off access right there. Um, there's also the societal or the, the societal attitudes of you have a disability and perhaps this might be something um, that, that you're not able to do rather than giving the person a chance of providing an accommodation. Um, and then you have the biopsychosocial or the biomedical model, 
where disability is seen as something that needs to be fixed. So it's seen as a problem. So those are the, the models of disability and how that has now evolved to the present day, uh, Scott, is that disability is seen as a natural part of the human experience. So for example, Kellen's disability is congenital. That is that he was born with it, right? But me and you may acquire a disability as we age. Um, we, uh, uh, as my patients say, Arthur might visit us and that arthritis might set in to perhaps where walking might not be easy and we need a walking aid or a, or a wheelchair. So disability is seen as something that, that happens, can happen through the lifespan at any particular um, point. Uh, as far as the language of disability is concerned, there is person uh, or people first uh, language and then there's identity first. So people first would be, uh, my son Kellen has cerebral palsy. Identity first would put the cerebral palsy first, uh, such as um, uh, would put the, would, put the disability first. Now, parents um, often use the term special needs and you know, that's within our right, that that's how we view or perceive a disability. But keep in mind that young adults and um, older, uh, older adults may choose to see disability as part of their identity. Um, so, they, they, so they would prefer the term disabled adult or a person with a disability. So, you know, at the end of the day is what do you feel comfortable with? And I always edge on the side of ask, you know, just start up the conversation. Uh, that, there is that certain bit of uncomfortableness, especially if you haven't met a person with a disability before, Scott, but just, just bridge the gap by saying hello. And that opens up so many avenues. I mean, that creates conversation. That's all it is. Just create the conversation. Don't be shy to say hi. And um, now, and just just create conversation. Start, start the talk. Obviously dealt with people in your uh, physical therapy job who yeah. uh, were people with disabilities. And then suddenly you're raising, you know, a, a very smart, uh, uh, charismatic young man, you know, who has a disability. And so what what's different about what you've experienced now that you're really in it versus what maybe you thought when you were first starting out? I thought I was in it when I was a physical therapist because I was very much an advocate for my patients. I mean, that's just what we do. Um, we spend such long, you know, we, we spend long time frames with our patients, so to speak, Scott. But obviously with uh, Kellen having cerebral palsy and it being something that we live and breathe every day, I am super passionate. Like I'm a mama on a mission. Um, and, and just that whole education piece of give him a chance. Um, and you would be surprised at what he can do. And just don't close doors, but rather open doors. So very much coming from that mindset. And having said that, I think that's something we all want, no matter who you are, no matter um, who you are as a parent. I mean, we want that for our child. We want them to dream of the possibilities and not shut that down. Um, obviously, I mean, we are we are grounded in the sense that, uh, Kellen, I don't expect you to fly a plane, but I mean, so there is a bit of reality in there as well. So I just think that as far as him wanting to do something, I'm going to encourage him every step of the way, support him 100% have his back 100% and having said that it's just not killing I recognize it's just not about him I need for him to be um, uh, placed in this community but also have a network of peers that might be similar to him so that's the reasoning behind the podcast it's creating a community not only of his neurotypical peers 
but those neurodiverse peers as well. So it's about that inclusion uh, component. Well, and I like the way on your website you describe the podcast and what you're doing um, as, uh, you know, the question was, are you a parent bewildered by your child's disability? And then you answer that you're a community connected by a diagnosis, yet positively embracing your lives. um, And you want parents to know they're not alone. And I think that's really powerful. Thank you, Scott. We uh, we kind of, I had to sit with that copy for a while just to, I mean, Obviously, I know 100% what I'm all about and what the mission is, but I think, as you said, the framing of the disability so that you create a comfortable environment where conversation is encouraged rather shut down. So thank you, sir. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, um, I want to ask you a little bit more about the podcast and the marketing and PR part of what you're doing. So we'll be right back. All right. Thank you. Situated amongst the rolling hills of Northwest Tennessee, White Squirrel Winery was founded by the Sanderson's family to bring high quality wines to the region. All their wines are made right there in Kenton, Tennessee, just a few miles from Discovery Park, using more than 18 acres of fresh grapes and fruits. From red muscadines to blackberry wines, they created bold tasting wines in small batches for maximum quality. For more information, visit whitesquirrelwinery.com. Thank you, Eric. I hope you all are enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So welcome back. Our guest today is Marsh Nadeau, host of the Raising Kellen podcast and a huge advocate for people in West Tennessee and families in West Tennessee who have uh, folks in their family who um, have disabilities. Uh, When you first came upon the idea of a podcast as a a communication tool, um, talk me through some of the things that you did to be able to create it. First was figuring out how do I get this podcast made? Um, So um, Kellen would take short trips to St. Louis Hospital, right? And uh, we often stayed uh, stayed in the Airbnb. And one of the experiences offered on the Airbnb website was, do you want to learn how to podcast? So while he was receiving his therapy, a, a, a young gentleman took me through the process um, oh my goodness, I'm trying to, Audius Prime. That's the name. It was Matthew Sims from Audius Prime. Um, so that was my, uh, Matt was my teacher, basically. Um, and um, I went on to learn Reaper. Um, so that was interesting because that that's like healthcare and then media. It's like two two different extremes. And I love it because, I think with healthcare, we are so process driven sometimes, but media is creative. So I love that, that output there. And uh, so that's how the podcast started. One episode led to another, um, you know, a dear friend of mine, Mary Brown. So we connected and then she's introduced me to some people and, and that's how one episode leads to another. So uh, my my husband often asks, so when does it stop? I'm like, it's not going to stop because, you know, you just, you meet all these fantastic people and, and, and one episode tends to build on another. So it's, it's an amazing networking tool. Yeah. And what does, what does your husband do for a living? He works um, at SRG, which is in Portageville, Missouri. Yes. I was wondering if he had like an advertising or communication background um, at all, because your website's really, it's spot on. You've done a fantastic job um, on your website and on the promotions and of the, of the podcast. The first website started in WordPress and that was, was, was difficult, but I did have a friend help me, Scott. And the website you see currently honestly was made possible from a grant from the Tennessee Disability Coalition. And Alan Ingalls here in Diesburg 
help me set up that square space. So I keep it going, but um, Alan helped me set it up. So that, yeah. That's well, kudos it. for that. So what has surprised you about podcasting? What's, what's different than what you thought? Uh, man, it's just, uh, as I said, I didn't, I underestimated the amount of time and work it actually takes. So that, yeah, that, that was the surprise right there. But I'm also surprised at um, how receptive people are to talk to you when, when you have a podcast. And I'm surprised by the doors it opens up. And um, I mean, I'm surprised by, I mean, just, I mean, this is like a MBA, you know, you, I mean, there's so much of knowledge out there. It's, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you just learn so much. So, and you yeah, probably, those- you probably hear from people who you've helped and touched and improved, you know, their lives with their families who you would never have met, you know, I'm yeah. sure you're helping people and hearing from people that surprise you, you know, that you, you, in your physical therapy gig, yeah. uh, you help people all the time, but this is the way you're helping people that you're not even physically seeing or talking to. This was, uh, yesterday I recorded one of my episodes, right? And the guy is like, um, I mean, so well, like, what is your motivation? Well, I said, well, it's like leaving breadcrumbs, so to speak, for other parents. And he says, you know what? Those breadcrumbs often add up to a meal. So that's what it is. Yep. Just that information. Yeah. So what's next? Okay. I am so glad you asked. Because <laughs> <laughs> that this is why I was contacting you because I so really want to get this message out. We are holding um, a live in-person event at Fern Lake, which is here in Diasburg on the 26th of August. And it is a conference focused on disabilities for parents, grandparents, educators, therapists to come together and collaborate. And the topics to be discussed uh, include future and financial planning, IEPs, transitional services, vocational services, what's out there for our kids once they turn 21 and older. So if you are in Northwest Tennessee, please come and join us on the 26th of August if disability is something dear to your heart. And that uh, is a beautiful venue, by the way. We've had we've had yeah. events there. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's going to be a, a held at the Linné at the cottage. So it's going to be indoors. We're going to have shelter from that, uh, that, that burning summer sun. So it's going to be air conditioned. And it's just going to be really nicely set up. We themed it or the name of the conference is going to be Day at a Lake. It's meant to be restorative. It's meant to be relaxing. It's supposed uh, meant to be in an environment that uh, you can take in the information that that's delivered in the content that's going to be uh, produced. And um, Scott, and we have a, another thing that's coming up. And um, I originally wrote a book called "What I Wish I Knew Back Then," right? And that was actually the audience was parents. But there's a second book that's coming out that's targeted at foundational phase um, learners to introduce the concept of disability and to open up the conversation between parents and their neurotypical kids. So that is actually being worked right now. Um, The copy is done and the young adults at On the Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, doing the drawings or the illustrations for the book. So um, I would love to let you know when that's that's ready, but that those are the two projects we have coming up. So if somebody is listening and they want to find out more about the conference or they also want to download uh, the podcast and start listening to that, where do they go? Uh, Raising Kellen, spelled K-E-L-L-A-N dot org. That's the website. And the event is on there as well as links that's actually charted on a mountain. It's categorized, it's tagged, it's um it, it's meant to be easy for parents. It's it's um underwhelming. Everything is really nicely organized for them. 
um, as they look through for resources. Fantastic. And will you promise me one thing? The next time you bring Kellen to Discovery Park, you let me meet him in person. We are coming to see you, Scott. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Scott, thank you for this opportunity again and um, look forward to seeing you. And thanks to all you listeners who've joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. 